who were Britain's longest-serving soap stars. Following June Spence's retirement is Peggy. Woolley, Ken Barlow and Ian Beale are characters who also appeared in their shows when they first aired June Spencer, the last original cast member of The Arches, has retired from the BBC Radio 4 drama at the age of 103. Spencer, who played the matriarch Peggy Woolley since 1951, made her final appearance on 31 July when she discussed getting a stained glass window commissioned of her two great-grandchildren. Spencer was a young woman with little girls. When the Archers first started, now she's a great-grandmother. Though her time on the Archers is unrivaled, there are numerous stars who have spent decades on Britain's most loved soap operas, becoming a familiar face for generations of fans. Coronation Street William Roach. As Ken Barlow, Bill Roach holds the Guinness World Record for the longest serving actor in a television soap opera, having playing Ken Barlow since Coronation Street was first broadcast in December 1960. Earlier this year, the actor, now 90 years old, said, Whilst I can do it, and whilst they will have me, I have no intention of retiring. Roach was made an OBE. In the Queen's New Year Honours list in December 2021 for his services to drama and charity. His character, Barlow, was introduced as the educated son of a working class family, and developed a reputation as a ladies' man who married four times to three women and fathering four children. With three women. Despite having a reputation for being a bore, Barlow has been involved in a number of explosive storylines. Barbara Knox, as Rita Tanner, though she is not the longest. Serving actor on Corrie, Knox, 88, holds the record for the longest serving soap actress. She first appeared on the show in an episode in December 1964, but returned formally to reprise. Her role long term in 1974 and has been with the soap ever since. Tanner has been married three times and her turbulent relationship with the psychotic character Alan Bradley is regarded as one of the show's most famous storylines. EastEnders Adam Woodyett, as Ian Beale, until taking a break from the show last year, Woodyett was the longest serving EastEnders actor. Appearing on it since it first aired in 1985, viewers have watched Ian Beale's journey from a young boy to a successful, albeit troubled, businessman. The entrepreneur of Walford had five marriages, lost his daughter and even went through a period of homelessness. Though, there have been rumors that Beale will return to Albert Square, Woodyett recently hinted that the rumors could be premature. The speculation has been hysterical, but there are no plans. At the moment, he said in an interview, EastEnders superfans will know that Tracy the barmaid is technically the longest-running EastEnders character ever, having also appeared in the first ever episode of the show in 1985 and continues to be a resident of Albert Square, though. She has been at the center of many of the soap's iconic moments, Slaughter's character does not even have a surname. Emmerdale Chris Chittle, as Eric Pollard, Chittle's character, has been on Emmerdale since September 1986 joining the show 14 years after it first aired. As Emmerdale Farm, as a seasoned conman, Pollard originally served as the show's villain. But this has been toned down in recent years, particularly since his marriage to Val Lambert, Charlie Hardwick, and later grief over her death in a helicopter crash. Chittle was awarded the British Empire Medal in the 2019 Queen's Birthday Honours List for services to drama and charity. Hollyoaks Nicholas Picard, as Tony Hutchinson, Nick Picard has played Hutchinson.
on Hollyoaks since its first episode in 1995, when the show had a cast of just 15 characters. Viewers have followed Hutchinson's journey from a floppy-haired teenager into a husband, father and entrepreneur. In 2017, Picard won the British Soap Award for Outstanding Achievement in honor of his achievement of playing the role for more than two decades. Asked why he'd never left the show in an interview in 2020, Picard said, if they get rid of you that's one thing. But if you leave and look back and ask, why did I do that when I was so happy there? You'd kick yourself. As you're joining us today from Turkey, we have a small favor to ask. Tens of millions have placed their trust in The Guardian's fearless journalism since we started publishing 200 years ago, turning to us in moments of crisis, uncertainty, solidarity, and hope. More than 1.5 million supporters, from 180 countries, now power us financially, keeping us open to all, and fiercely independent. Unlike many others, The Guardian has no shareholders and no billionaire owner. Just the determination and passion to deliver high impact. Global reporting. Always free from commercial or political influence. Reporting like this is vital for democracy, for fairness and to demand better from the powerful. And we provide all this for free, for everyone to read. We do this because we believe in information equality. Greater numbers of people can keep track of the events shaping our world, understand their impact on people and communities, and become inspired to take meaningful action. Millions can benefit from open access to quality, truthful news, regardless of their ability to pay for it. Every contribution, however big or small, powers our journalism and sustains our future. Support The Guardian from as little as one euro it only takes a minute. If you can, please consider supporting us with a regular amount each month. Thank you. At least when the end comes for Peggy Woolley, the redoubtable matriarch of the arches, it looks like it won't be too painful. I very much doubt there will be an accident on the Ambridge Bypass, a charging bull, a tractor toppling on top of her or indeed, the fate chosen for me 11 years ago, a spectacular fall from a roof. My much-loved former colleague June Spencer, who, unbelievably, is now 103 years old, has decided it is time for her character, Peggy, to bow out of the Radio 4 series after first debuting in 1950. She had been asking the scriptwriters for a while to give her an exit, but they kept coming back with yet more episodes. Now that they've come to terms with it, there is talk of Peggy simply being packed off to the Laurels, the fictional care home in Ambridge. And that will be the last we hear of her. Of course, her character will be terribly missed. There is a peculiar intimacy that grows between the Archers, family, and their listeners. That intensifies over time. And while I know it's what June wants, I know, too, something of what she will be going through. It was a real wrench for me to say goodbye to my own character. Nigel Pargetta. I was a mere whippersnapper of 60 I'd done just 28 years in the series. When I met my end, but a bond develops between player and part that goes well beyond the attachment to a regular paycheck. The character starts to feel like kith and kin. It's funny how protective actors become to their parts in long-running dramas. If anyone says a word against my beloved Nigel, even now I find myself defending him robustly, the film The Killing of Sister George, starring Beryl Reed as a soap actor called June Buckridge, got across something of the sense of loss when those parts are taken from us. Buckridge couldn't come to terms with 
her homely character being written out of a long-running show. I had actually joked to fellow cast members before recording Nigel's last moments that I'd do a sister George, and yell out. After my initial blood-curdling scream, Oh no, don't worry, I've managed to grab hold of the ledge. I think I'll be fine. I need hardly add that, on the day, I died as I was expected. 2. There's a professionalism on that series that nothing ever diminishes and that June absolutely epitomized. God and the scriptwriters willing, there is of course no reason why age, even advanced old age, should be a bar to any actor working in radio until their dying days. And The Archers was truly one of those jobs that you could happily stay in forever. An actor who is around 100 years old appearing in a drama is not without precedent. Gwen Francan Davies was 100 when she made her final appearance in a teleplay of the Sherlock Holmes mystery The Master Blackmailer. On radio, the physical exertion is not great. In my days on the show, we would sit in a huddle with the scripts on our laps when we recorded. The pandemic and technological advances have made it perfectly normal for actors to now literally phone in their parts from home. So you can see why actors stay on for as long as they do, which is part of what makes the archers so credible and absorbing for its devoted listeners. Although I welcomed the regular income from the show, I always tried hard to keep playing other characters in film and on television. I was too restless to play just one role, and as an actor I never wanted to live and die with Nigel. After his fall, I had no trouble finding other roles. But, June, who has been a mainstay on the series for so long, has nothing more to prove. I recall her kind and generous note to me when I left the Archers family and I can only wish her the very best now that she, too, is leaving. She should be very proud of how she played the part, as well as her unfailing politeness and good humor to so many colleagues over so many years. June, you will always be part of the family, and I wish you a long and happy retirement. But, knowing how uniquely strong and resilient you are, too, I do think you're going at least 10 years too early. As you're joining us today from Turkey, we have a small favor to ask. Tens of millions have placed their trust in the Guardian's fearless journalism since we started. Publishing 200 years ago, turning to us in moments of crisis, uncertainty, solidarity and hope. More than 1.5 million supporters, from 180 countries, now power us financially, keeping us open to all, and fiercely independent. Unlike many others, The Guardian has no shareholders and no billionaire owner. Just the determination and passion to deliver high-impact global reporting, always free from commercial or political influence. Reporting like this is vital for democracy, for fairness and to demand better from the powerful, and we provide all this for free, for everyone to read. We do this because we believe in information equality. Greater numbers of people can keep track of the events shaping our world, understand their impact on people and communities, and become inspired to take meaningful action. Millions can benefit from open access to quality, truthful news, regardless of their ability to pay for it. Every contribution, however big or small, powers our journalism and sustains our future. Support. The Guardian from as little as one euro it only takes a minute. If you can, please consider supporting us with a regular amount each month. Thank you.